All right, let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 14. And this morning, I mean, this morning I want to talk about why God blesses compassionate people. Why God blesses compassionate people. Matthew chapter 14 in verse 13. Matthew chapter 14 in verse 13. The Bible says, and when Jesus heard of it, they departed by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the city. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude. And he was moved with compassion towards them. And he healed them. I want to notice the graduation of things that happened. Number one, Jesus saw the multitude. Number two, he had compassion. Number three, he healed them. So this morning, I'm talking about why God blesses and uses compassionate people. One of the things I've been asked often is this. Why does bad things happen in this world why does bad things happen to God's people it's great to think and it's correct to think but it's incomplete that all bad things that happen is the work of Satan that's correct but it's incomplete I do not believe according to the word of God that all bad things let me give an example a single girl gets pregnant and it says God why did you do this to me is it God is it Satan it's a choice so sometimes bad things happen because of Satan but second secondly bad things also happen because of poor choices because of our choices there's a certain choice you have made about business. There's a certain choice you've made about your career. There's a certain choice you've made. You know, just because you're born in Africa, you will have a different life from those born in Europe. Yes or no? It's not about God or Satan. Sometimes it's just when you're born. And the third thing why bad things also happen is not even the direct work of Satan. It's of course, is the fact that we live in a fallen world. So, because we live in the falling world, the effect of the fall, of the curse, still lives in the world. So, for example, as we grow older, we will age. It's not a matter of Satan. It's just the fact that we live in a falling world. As you buy furniture, furniture are going to age. It's just So, because we live in a falling world, certain things also happen. Glory to God. But why am I saying that? We know in certain things to happen like that, it's important for us to learn how to help other people. Because in helping other people, we, we, we know people are broken. And to help people, we must develop compassion. The Bible speaks about this story that Jesus Christ, the Bible says when Jesus saw them, he had compassion of them. Let me read another story to you that, make in, that can help drive this home. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10 verse 29. The Bible says this. <laughs> but the man willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, Who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, A certain man went from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, and they stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed leaving him half dead. And by chance there came a certain priest that way. And when the priest saw him, watch this now, the priest passed on the other side. The reason why the priest passed on the other side was that there was an attraction, there was a connection. And the priest wanted to disconnect from that feeling. A pass on the other side. The Bible says, Likewise a Levite, when he was at the same place, came and looked at him and passed on the other side. And a certain Samaritan, 
a Samaritan is not religious. The priest, we understand, is religious. We know what the Levite is. He said, A certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. Take note of that word again. He had compassion. What is the difference between compassion, pity, and empathy? Compassion sees and takes action. Pity and empathy sees and discusses. So when you pity somebody, there's no action. But when you have compassion, you take action. Did you notice the Bible says, the Levite and the priest could have pitied him and felt sorry for him, but they didn't do anything about it. But the Bible says this man had compassion, a certain Samaritan. And it's amazing because the people you think are spiritual and powerful that should respond to people's needs never do is the people that we feel as if they are not spiritual, they are not that powerful that takes the first step. The Bible says this, and he came and saw him and had compassion on him and he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the matter when he was departed, he took out two pens and gave to the host and said, take care of him and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I'm coming again, I will, I will repay you. Which of these three thinkest thou was the neighbor unto him that fell amongst the thieves. Compassion is very, very important. You know why? I want to notice the first scripture we read. The Bible says he saw the multitude. He had compassion and he healed them. The first thing, compassion. This is why compassion is powerful. Because compassion triggers the power of God. A lot of people say, I want God to use me. A lot of people say, I want the power of God to flow inside of me. Listen to me. What determines if God can use you is where your compassion is. It's difficult for God to use a man that is not compassionate. Because first of all, how would the needs of the people get your attention? If you're not compassionate. How would the needs of the people get your attention? And I'm saying so because this is why compassion is powerful. Because God wants to use you. But the way he's going to use you is that you have to cultivate a heart of compassion. Wow. How many times do you drive by Admiralty at night and see those pretty young girls selling their body? And you don't even bother to say, what can we do to help this? How many times do you see someone discuss on Twitter or Instagram how they've been raped on social media? And some religious Christians will say, what did she go and do in a man's house? Someone is saying, I'm raped. You, that you are full of the love of God, your, your concern is that, what did she go and do in a man's house? Do you have heart at all? How do you walk by and see five-year-old, six-year-old boys knock at the door of your glass at traffic junctions. And it does not occur to you that when you were that young, you never thought about food because you had parents that provided for you. Where is your heart of compassion? And the truth is this, I know there is abuse because there's a lot of need in our society. How many of you will drive and stop to buy roasted corn or roasted plantain? And the roasted corn or roasted plantain teller tells you each of them is 150 naira. 
and you pack your Lexus 570. Everything that woman is selling is 10,000 naira. I hope you know that. That's too much now. Let's be honest now. Everything she's selling is 5,000 naira. And you pack and say, that's too much. Give me two, 400. And you can see, it's almost as if you are draining blood out of her. But you can see. But, and as she's doing it, you see the child crying. And she, oh yeah, come, come, come. she puts the child on the left hand, takes the right hand, and you can see this is what she needs to feed this child. And you can say, you know what? Just take 5,000 and give me two. Where's the heart of compassion? We hear things happen. We hear things happen. Things have been exploding, not in Nigeria. We behave as if we don't know something called nothing in Nigeria. The heart of compassion. Listen, what makes us Christians that we are different from other people? Yes, sir. Do you know today, today is Father's Day? I thank God for all of you that have great fathers and your father is alive. But there are people that are going to break down today. And you know them. What will you tell them and say, Angel, I'm coming to pick you. Because I know today you will not go anywhere. You know children that are five and seven years old, family friend, that their father are dead. What will you say and say, hey, send your kids over because, you know, and you come over, mommy, because I know that is what compassion is. Not just discussing it. This is we doing something. The Bible says, the priest came, looked, and walked to the other side. Is that not what you do? You just pretend as if the problem is never there. How I many of you still have, after five years, you still have wedding gifts in your house you have not opened? And yet, that wedding gift can be a big gift to somebody else. See, let me say something about, about compassion. The more you're compassionate, the more God uses you. You know why? Because God trusts you. God knows if he gives you the one million dollars, he knows you will help people. God knows. God knows that. He knows. He can see your heart. When last did you take time and pray for that friend of yours that is going through a divorce and go on your knees and say, I pray for this friend of mine and your compassion leads them to prayer? No. You'd rather call your friends. She didn't imagine. I've told you, she married that man because he was rich. When we turned out, is that what you would do? Is that what the love of Christ would do? A lot of you have businesses and in your business you do big figures 100 million 200 million 300 million there are all these other businesses that do two three million from you you know some people in church in your family you know some people that are very faithful if you give them this day for one million they'll make two hundred thousand. that's a miracle to them what will it cost you to give it out compassion and i'm saying so because we're christians we must be able to develop compassion. Do you, know, do you know the thing? There are many of you that are very successful. It will cost you nothing to say, Pastor, do you have a group of young people I can teach business? Within two years, I can help them build a strong business. And the reason why is that you've, you have a good run, but can you pass it to somebody else? And this is what I tell people. The life that is focused on self-centeredness is empty in the middle. You didn't say it, you didn't. The life that is focused on self is empty in the middle. Do you know how many people in your family, in your extended family, cannot pay school fees? And meanwhile, you go over and above for you and your family, and all they need is just 200,000 to pay school fees and they are home. We can turn our eye, we can do that. We're currently involved in a project with Marco Co. Oh my God. And they sent me all the videos because our team is helping us organize this. And they said, this, this children in Marco Co, this is what they do. That they, there's no school in Marco Co. So they take boats to the nearest school. And when I say boat, not the f- boats you see, Keno. They said, the, the Keno is leaking water under. So it's coming, water under. 
He said, and, and the kids go there without life jackets. So if something happens to the canoe, they will pour inside. You know the bad thing? It never appears on news. So we, senior, so we elite Nigerians, Marco Koe is not, they are, are they human beings? No, they are inferior lives. The real life is in Lekki. Yet before God, all souls are mine. I asked the guy, I said, how much is, I said, how much is a life vest? He says, 10,000 naira. I said, how long have you been marketing for this? He says, it's been a while. We've not gotten more than three people to buy. See, this is the thing about compassion. We are compassionate not because we don't have our problems. But we understand that blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. See, we are compassionate not because we don't have our problem, but we know that blessed are the merciful, for they shall play mercy. Do, do you know how you mind people talk to single girls that are delayed and they are waiting for your husband? Every time you say, you, you will not, you will not go and marry, you will not go and marry. You don't even know how those comments are irritating to them. If you want to help somebody, help somebody. An introduction can help. Glory to God. If you want to help, help. And I told you, the difference between pity and compassion is this. Pity is so focused. on, on they, they pity you, but there's nothing they will do. Compassion says, I don't just pity you, I get involved. Compassion makes you true. You, you, you get involved, sir. Glory to God. The Bible says that when the Samaritan saw, he saw the man. He carried him. That's compassion. You carry them. The challenge is this. Because, because of the pain, because of our survival mentality, we have a tendency. That's why you see Nigerians abroad. They'll keep talking about Nigeria. Help us. Don't tweet. Help us. We need school. Help us. He said, he's a politician. We know they are there. We have no power to change them yet. We are working on it. Help us. What about we that are here? Let's help ourselves. When I see you in traffic, the way you drive, is that government? After this powerful word, get to the car park. <laughs> ah, you even forgot that you just had a message of compassion. Glory to God. I said, Glory to God. We, we must learn. It's something we must learn, we must learn to cultivate compassion. Why is it powerful to cultivate compassion? Number one. Compassion makes you more useful to God because, because this is what God does. And, and I don't know if you see, this is, the, this, is, this is what the Bible says. The Bible says, how many widows were in, were in Israel that God never sent Elijah to any of the widow except the widow in what? Zarephath. You know why? God always looks for who is compassionate that can help. So he says, although there are many people here, I would rather send the widow to Zarephath. Can you imagine that there was nobody to help in the whole of Israel? He had to send Elijah to Zarephath. Question, when God wants to help people, can he find you? Or he has to send them to Zarephath before he can find someone to help. Compassion. Compassion says, I have my problem. I can slow down and pay attention to someone else's problem. You know, um, one day, I'm not sure what we're going to do. And um, we're going somewhere. And um, someone had had an accident. You know, and sometimes you can't do this because of safety and all of those kind of, it can be a lie. It can be, but this was for real. And as we're rushing, I told the guy down, so I said, slow down. I said, let's wait. He said, Pastor, we're late. I said that. What is more important, preaching or helping someone save their life? Because sometimes the values become, becomes confusing. We, we ask a leader, where's the workers' attendance? I said that they're always after attendance. You don't know what attendance means? Because when someone does not come to church, it's one of many things. It can be that they're just being lazy, but the other thing that they can be very discouraged about something, depressed about something. Can we call them and ask them? It can also be because they're just losing spiritual focus. Do you know many of your friends 
are so down by what is going on in their marriage, in their life. And all you need to do is to say, oh, friend, I would love to invite you to church. I would love you to join NLP. That is what will change their life. But you will just talk about it and there's nothing you're going to do. And compassion takes action. Do you know how many people are looking? See, many of you have friends that your other friends are taking them to Herbalist. They are giving them this thing on social media. What's it called? White fowl. I mean, our secrets. Kama. Kayamata. When you will not tell your single friends what Jesus can do. When you refuse to send them link, your friend will send them Kayamata and say, this one is working. You will not wonder when they become demon possessed. When they become, they will not bring the demon to your house. You will not say, when they become like this. They say, ah, it's husband. Are you here? compassion what will it cost you to slow down and go to the office next to you and say I noticed that you are very by yourself I just want to pray for you and the person goes why do you want to pray for me I just feel as if I would like to pray for you is there something to pray about and See, you're not even asking them questions. Is there something to pray about? And most of the time when you ask people those questions, instantly their eyes will bubble up with tears and it will start coming down because behind the nice Louis Vuitton bag, behind the G-Wagon they ride, are rotting people dying. Fine body but dying soul. And the only reason why they dress well is to cover up the pain they're going through. But it's compassion that makes you feel that way. How many of your friends are cocaine addicts? You know. You know the thing? You know they're addicts. But you, you cross over. I don't want to know. Like the Levites. I don't want to know. You, you can tell that that guy is a serial womanizer. I, I don't want to know. You, you can be like, is this something you like or something you can't get rid of? Because some of them don't like it. They're just used to it. When they just see a woman, hey, ah, uh, hey, ah, uh, ah, 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 they, they, they can't control it. Compassion. Why is compassion powerful? Why is compassion powerful? This is why compassion is powerful. Because compassion allows for divine partnerships. I know that you say that God can do everything. It's true. But in God doing everything, he's always looking for people. For him to deliver Israel out of Egypt, he looked for Moses. For him, to, you see, God is always looking for people. But God looks for people that has compassion for what he wants. God looks for people that has compassion for his curse. Why did he find Moses? The Bible says before he found Moses, that Moses had passed one day and he saw two Egyptians fighting and he had compassion and settled it. God says, this guy already has a heart. And you know what the Bible says? The Bible says this, that God told David, he told David, he said, David, because it was in your heart to build me a house, he said, I will bless you. David had not even built the house. It was just in his heart. There's something. See, if it is in your heart, God will put it in your hand. The challenge is this. It's never, it was never in your heart. With how successful you've been, can you mentor people with this knowledge? Is that in your heart? If it's in your heart, one day, God will put it in your hands. Oh, are you fond of looking away? Are you fond of looking away? You, you know how I many of us have drivers here? And you have shirts, shoes, you have not worn in one year. And you can pack everything and say, Oga oh, driver, take, go and wear. Oga oh, houseboy, take, go and wear. Cleaner in the office, take, go and wear. Young officer, take, go and wear. No, we would rather allow those clothes to be destroyed in the wardrobe. 
that we're giving out. Compassion. Are you here, somebody? See, what is going to make the difference as Christians? A lady tells you how, hard she, how heartbroken she is. All you can think of is how to date her next. What kind of human being are you? Say so you now come. She, now that you're heartbroken, you come to my house and spend the night. She will come and spend the night. Everything. He said, why should I come? Say, just to take care of you. I just want to, you know, you know, you know take care of you. Why? In a vulnerability, you want to take advantage of her. Are you a child of God? Once they need school fees and they come to you, opportunity for meet me in the room. Once they need recommendation, hey, that's what I'm telling you. I can help you. Allow me to help you. Compassion. You, you, you must reap from where you sow. They know you, Mr. Harvest. You must reap from where you sow. They know you. You must reap. You don't just help like that. I don't help you. Just help. No. But remember, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Maybe you too need help. Your help is coming. Are you here? Yes, sir. It's something we must cultivate. Compassion. When last, I want to ask you a bigger question. When last did you lead someone to Jesus Christ? Did you say, hey, this person is not born again. If he dies, he will go to hell. Do you know Jesus? When last did you say, will you follow me to church? Do you even have the heart? Do, does God, be, you don't even think about them that way. All you see is the big G-Wagon they drive. But with their big G-Wagon, like the rich man, they will end up in hell. There will be none on earth but nobody in heaven. Your boss is paying you salary every month. Have you taken the time and said, sir, I'm grateful for what you've done. But sir, I want to say something. Can I send you a link? And the reason why is that you're thinking, with how great this man is, if he just knows Jesus in a personal way, it will change his life forever. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. So compassion, so, so when people are compassionate, I, I was telling them in the first service, you know, I, when I came to service, I was, you know, I was complaining to my assistant and because my, you know, I had this belt and it was, it fitted perfectly. I didn't know it fitted perfectly. Then I just noticed that um, this morning I was trying to use it and it had lost. So I was like, no, but I'm not even, I, I'm not really walking actively on my weight. You know, it's somewhere in my mind I want to lose weight. But I remember that NLP Houston is coming, so we have all this fasting and all of these things and all of those things. So eventually the weight is going down itself. See, you don't understand. You know, why do you want to fast over to receive that miracle? If they have cancer, let them die now. It was my, am I a doctor? The only reason you think that way is compassion. Some of the pastors we gather 545 on certain days every morning and we're praying. So we gather 545 to pray, then 6:30 we move to the next level. Because you don't see the suit. Because all you see is the suit. And that's why most of you, when you see pastoral work, you see the wrong thing. Don't let all this suit and tie deceive you. There is cross that has been carried. For those that are truly doing this work. Because, because by the time you go, this is, a, this is the pain of a pastor. Every time you discuss your problem with them, you transfer the problem to them. Then that subject becomes an object of prayer. Sometimes when we are praying for the sick, they can tell you, we're praying with tears. You will see us crying as though it's our children that are sick. Meanwhile, we're praying for other people. Someone, someone asked me one time, I'm not even sure if it was Pastor DG or you know, one of the pastors. He said, he, said, he said, Pastor, why do you find it very easy to cry? I said, I'm not sure if I find it easy to cry because a lot of things don't make me cry. I've never had the loss that's made me cry. I said, but when you see the people and the Spirit of God opens your eyes, and you can see their states. And the compassion of God grips your soul. Without rehearsing it, the tears will start coming now. You will say, it cannot be this way. You will say, God of heaven, intervene. Oh, God of heaven, intervene. Oh, because we know at that state, all we can do is pray. But what makes you pray that? Listen, some of you, the reason why your prayer life is short is that it's all about you. 
There's nobody to pray for than you. So when it comes to hear your children, all the prayer is done in seven minutes. But when you remember your friend, the child that has, the family that has autism, and the one that has cerebral palsy, and the other best friend of yours that is single, and the one that has cancer, you will not know when you will spend one hour there because there's so much to pray about. You remember our state, our nation, the nations of the world. The compassion of God will grip your soul. And that's why God uses that person. You know why? Because God can get his attention quickly. He can get his attention quickly. Can God get your attention quickly? Compassion does that. How do you become compassionate? Luke chapter 10. Someone say hallelujah. Let, let, me, let me just help you. Do you know how many Nigerian families go to, go to bed every day without food? Do you know how many people cannot pay school fees in this country? Do you know how inflation is wiping out businesses and making things difficult for everyone? It's terrible. Some people are largesting in money. I know. But in the, they're in the minority. When we did It's Okay, I was surprised at the statistics. It's not okay. One out of every, that was some years ago, one out of every five girls in Lagos has been raped. One out of every five girls in Lagos has been raped. In Lagos, there are over 20 million. Yet, all the church in Lagos combine them together. You don't have an attendance of 2.5 million. So, how do you know? The traffic you see on weekends or Sundays, is it 10% of what's during weekday? Because of what? Where are they going to? On their way to a place that, of people that don't know God. And some of them, all the, you don't know, this is the power of the gospel. They may not trust the pastors, but they know you. They know you, Patricia. They know you, Victoria. They know you, Vincent. If you tell them your story, how God has changed you, they will say, take me. But we're so consumed in ourselves. You know, the, the worst thing is that some of, those, some of them, their kids have not been to church in two years. Those kids who grow up, they will say, who is Moses? They will ask you. Because now, there's no CRK in primary school again. Where we learn Bible. That's the first one. Then the second one is this. There's no shaka in primary school again. Then the second one is that Disney has said half of our character will become what? LGBT. He said, there'll be no male or female character again. And that's what our kids will be watching. And we must keep quiet. See, when we chase the money and find it, we will not call, use the money to buy peace. But can money buy peace? Glory to God. I said glory to God. There's a heart. We must develop compassion. Don't just walk away. Don't just, don't just walk away. Don't just walk away. See, see the, let, let's read Luke chapter 10 verse 29. The Bible says this. Let's read quickly. It says this. But, he willing to justify himself to Jesus. Who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell amongst thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him up dead. He says, And by chance there came a certain priest. That's the thing. You thought you came by chance. It was by divine coincidence. It's not by chance you live in that estate. There are people that God wants to touch in that estate. It's not by chance you walk in Axis Bank. There are people God wants to touch there. It's not by that chance you walk in Forty Oil. There are people you want to touch there. It's not by chance that you live in that community. There are people that God wants to touch there. You are God's hands. You are His feet. You are His eyes. You are His temple. When you touch, God has touched. When you speak, God has spoken. You are asking yourself, why are all my friends getting divorced? Because you are not doing your assignment. You are the one that's meant to bring the light of a healthy marriage to their home. But every time they say they have a problem, like the priest, 
by chance there came a certain priest and when he saw him he crossed over I don't want to see him he's like that song on social media if you have problem call God if you have business call me such a useless song he's a song propelled out of selfishness and self-centeredness he's so terrible that even pastor's page if you have problem call God when they have problem who should they call I thought you were the light of the world I thought you were God's answer to them say to yourself I'm God's answer to a dying world say I'm God's answer to a dying world you must become an oasis in the desert people are flocking around you because they know that in your mouth there's words of wisdom and life All those children of your friends that don't go to church three, four years time now, you'll not be wondering how did they become useless teenagers. When you could influence them and bring them to church, you didn't bring them. Teenager, you now want to force them as a teenager. Keep going. One of your friends are going to divorce. You can't fast and pray and say, honey, let's pray together this weekend. All you'll be discussing is how useless the man is. How he carries all sorts of girls. You even caught your friend. I even saw him yesterday. Can you match? They were right there. This and this and this. What would that do to help her? Instead of saying, honey, I've heard everything. It's time to fast and pray. Three days. Don't let us eat. No, no, no. That can be three days. Because all you want to do is pity. No compassion. Talk about the problem. You know the one that the husband cannot take care of the house that needs support from the father-in-law or from the wife. You'd not be saying, <laughs> once he enters, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Oga. <laughs> not all men are men. You see your girlfriend struggling their marriage. You say, you see, I told her. Our oh, marriage man, marriage man. She has my rich man now. Does she have peace? No. At least we were not rich. We are not poor, but we have peace. Look at, hear yourself. Hear the things you are saying. You say, but I'm not rejoicing that evil. Oh. You are rejoicing that evil. You are rejoicing that damn forever. Look, you will come to church with empty car. What about all the people that need Jesus in your estate? Why is your car empty? So you have testimony. You keep it to yourself. Didn't you the son of the woman? He says, come and see. Who has saved me? Compassion. Compassion. Are we going to live? Are we going to keep living like this? Don't you realize the biggest sense of fulfillment is going to come from giving? The biggest sense of fulfillment is going to come from giving. All your social media, it's everything about you. Your food, your beauty, your first class, Business class, car. What will help your followers? Nothing. What is selfish generation? Selfish generation. Selfish generation. We even have a cliche word called selfie. It's all about me. So when you see my social media, my car, my job, my money. People even take dollar, put on social media so that their friends can be oppressed. But when there's something that bless other people, can we share? No, we don't share things that can bless other people. No. How would they know? In fact, the people we call slay coins are very selfish. The more you show your lifestyle, the more you're a coin. Someone say hallelujah. Say I'm developing compassion. Let me tell you something. Eh? You need to do business with people, not because they can do good business, so just to encourage them. Just what? Encourage him. Say, I know the clothes you wear, I, you will not tell him more, but you know you can't wear the clothes, but you will give him business. And when he brings the clothes, just put it somewhere or give it to somebody else. But you know you have paid school fees. When you're coming to church, you must know something. Evangelism. See, it's our job to pull people out of the kingdom of darkness. You can't just say, I'm inviting you to church. No, you go and pick them at home. You will call them. 
Because you know, if you leave them at home, they'll be depressed. As they are home right now, some of them are crying. Some of them, they, this morning, they've used uh, that drug. Huh? Tramador! In the morning, Tramador, they, they are loaded with Tramador. Some of them last night, they drank to stupor. One girl told me, he said, I just used to sleep around to gain acceptance. Because they're looking for something. But the point is this, the Bible says you are the light of the world. You are the one to help them. You are, you are a working solution. Stop looking at yourself like a problem. Just imagine a compassionate church. When you, and this one I always tell, like the married men, married men, oh my God, from July, I'm, I'm working with some of our leaders, pastors is going to be involved. We're going to do a lot of things with you. Because all of you are very rich. You must be giving us some things. And say, oh, there's this job of one million. Do you know who can do it? This job of two million. Let them at least make 100K, 50K. It adds up somewhere. Didn't you read of the rich man that went to hell? The Bible says, Lazarus ate from the crumbs that first went from his table. Who is eating from the crumbs of your table? Even the crumbs you are packing. Hey! Even the crumbs you are packing. Yeah, you're doing a lot of 20 million. There's 20,000. Hey, hey, hey. The man that left crumb went to hell. You that are packing crumb, where are you going to? You must learn to leave. And see. Did you read the story? Read the stories of great women in the Bible. Read Ruth's husband. What's the name? Boaz. When Boaz saw that Ruth was packing crumbs, he told this man, leave the living, leave, 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 leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. You will just start leaving things. You will come for some meeting, just pack shoes. We don't know who brought these shoes, though, but this is for people who want shoes. We give out the shoes. A family used to do so well, but the husband died. They used to travel everywhere. When you're going on vacation, Ask, can we take one child? Let that child see ray of hope. You, you are in church. All the gifts you have, how can you serve with it? You know why we're not compassionate? As soon as we see. Because I've been praying. All this, you see, let me be honest. All these boys that beg in the king, 5, 10, 16, 10 years old, you know, most of you get, hey, sh you shoot them away. The anger you are building up in them. Because, you know, they're young people. They think with your big car, you have a lot of money. And when you say, shh, it's almost as if you know, they don't know that it's not like that because they are children, they cannot understand. So, when someone has a big car, they don't know that you're afraid of security. They don't know that They just think that, why are they so mean to us? You are pushing them to the work of darkness. You are pushing them. Hey! Let them grow. Let them grow. Let them grow. Just remember the words of the great politician. When the rich do not take care of the poor and allow their staff, he said they will starve so much, all they will have to eat is the rich himself. Because when I say, we want to do this and this and this, you see all the men, you just say, I don't do things like that. I don't do that. The one they come for is business seminar. You must get involved to live a very fulfilling life. Because if you don't give them peace, your children, it will be hard to find peace. So, can't you tell politicians, they send their children abroad because they can't have peace here. Praise God. I said praise God. I said praise God. How do you develop compassion? The first thing is this. You have to pay attention to others. You have to pay attention to others. When you come to church, look to the right, to the left. Whoa, you can't tell the smelling. Why is he smelling? Is it the clothes? There's some ladies I've met, they don't know how to take care of themselves. I'll say, come, let me introduce someone that can help you fix your hair. Because you only say you are single, delayed. You're not delayed. This hair can cause delay. <laughs> this hair. Ah, how can you hug me and I'm knocked out? Praise God. I'm knocked out. Oh my God. <laughs> Pay attention to others. Ah, why didn't you come... Ah, you go and visit a friend. Why are children not in school? Uh, you know these children, they like to play sometimes. 
take note of it. You go again next week. This should let you play again. They let you play at home. You take note. You say, ah, my sister, let's, let's talk. Last week I came, they were at home. This week I came, they are at home. Hope there's no problem with the school or the school fees. We don't ask that kind of question. So that the opportunity to, to do something does not arise. You know, I, I went to my sister with me one Sunday, yeah. We went to we went to Lennox Mall, hands her anyway, ordered ice cream. So I saw this young, the way they, they came, I knew that, you know, when people want to price ice cream, praise God. I knew that there was a problem. I could tell where they could have been coming from. When you want to price ice cream, you not buy one ice cream and eat it for one and a half hours. But it's not enough to do that. It's enough to say. So I now ask her, ask them if they are in school. He said, one says, I want to be a hairdresser. But I don't have what to do with head, I don't have what to do with hairdressing. You know, Christians, eh, we can point finger. They are doing this, they are doing this. What, what have you helped? We are in church now. Can we help ourselves? So how do you, so how do you, how do you become compassionate? By paying attention. Paying attention. You must put yourself in a place where you can pay attention. Don't be, I understand that human needs, can, I was telling him in the first service, I said, there's a, there's a family member in our church, in, in, in my family, not in our church, not in our, in our church. You know, the lady was always asking for money. She's my aunt. So I just said to her, I can't be constantly giving you all this money of you. Ask 20, 50, 100. Mm -mm, let's stop it. I said, you have two children. I will send them to school from now till they finish. And you don't ask for any money again. But so I've been doing that. Then recently, she forged, she said, Germany sent me the receipts, then I'll pay. The school fees receipts, um, bill, and I'll pay. Recently, she changed the figure for more money. So I now sent her a word. I said, I've seen you've changed the figure. I've called the school. I've stopped paying. Beat me. Because you didn't compel me to pay. Out of my personal budget, I made the decision. Glory to God. So how do you become compassion? Number one, pay attention to service. Self-centeredness kills compassion. Number two, so pay attention to others. Number two, pay attention to their needs. See them. You don't understand. You could see that beautiful. You don't understand. When you see all these people that so everything looks so nice, pay attention. You will see the whole inside. Don't look at them from, from Grammy eye. No, no, no. Don't look at them from Jiwa God eye. Don't look at them from car eye. Look at them from God's eye. You will not see where it's empty. The third one is that develop a solution mentality. Tell yourself, I'm God's force for good in my economy. I'm God's force for good. And the last thing is this, take action. Do what? Take action. Simple action. Pray for them. Pray for them, pray with them. <laughs> I love it. Pray for them, pray with them. Simple as, let me send you a link of a prayer to join. Next Sunday, what encourages me, church? Let me bring you there. Oh, you need money. This is how much I can. It's not all what you need though, but I can afford 10,000. Take this one. Don't be like the Levite. As soon as you see a problem, you just cross over. If you have a problem, call God. If you have business, call me. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Don't do that one. You're a Christian. Yeah. And let me tell you something. Eh? The more you are helpful to people, the more help will come to you to help people. Because Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Do you want mercy? Look at Judges chapter, Judges, sorry, Jude chapter, chapter, verse 22. Jude 22. Oh wow, Jude 22. Quickly. Jude 22, verse 21. Let's look at verse 21. Oh, this is good. He said, keep yourself in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto the eternal life. He says, the, in the pursuit of mercy. Then verse 22 says something powerful. And of some, have compassion. He says, have compassion. That single guy, that single girl that wants to kill herself because she's married. 
pay some attention. Have compassion. That person that cannot feed, have compassion. That widow woman, have compassion. That neighbor, have compassion. You can have compassion without attention. He said on some, have compassion. In your office, they dress so well. Have compassion. And when you have compassion, the next thing is this. Making a difference. Do something about it. There are people in your office, in your estate, in your school that needs you. Let's pray.